Africa's Kalahari is 100,000 square miles of dust and blowing sand. But in this place where dry winds vibrate with the sounds of life, one creature lives by the faintest whispers and cries. These are bat-eared foxes, and they survive here because of their enormous oval ears. From their first days as pups, they enter an unforgiving world where their survival will depend on detecting sounds, whether it's a meal hiding in the dirt or danger approaching on silent cat feet. And at night, when vision dims, they truly come into their own. Hunting their prey. Dodging those that stalk them. This is the story of one family's struggle to survive. A year in the realm of the Desert Fox. In an isolated corner of Botswana, along the dried out bed of the Nosab River, a fox we call Celine keeps her small eyes and big ears wide open. Together, she and her mate, Ajax, have found a home in this inhospitable land. They've borrowed a den from their closest neighbors, the meerkats. Celine and Ajax need the underground shelter. It's November, early summer in the Kalahari, and the foxes are raising a family. As afternoon draws to a close, Celine heads off in search of food, leaving Ajax behind to babysit. Only three weeks old, the pups are just beginning to emerge from the den, and Ajax is a protective father. But these four little bundles of fur will prove enough to challenge even the most watchful parent. There's Ajax's daughter, Flash, and her three brothers. Adventure is the explorer, always first out of the den. Kinky has a bent tail, and as his father can see, a feisty little disposition. Unlike the runt of the litter, little Joe, the young pups are growing up in a dangerous world, but in this part of the Kalahari, there's a neighborhood watch. A meerkat sentry, keeping an eye peeled for predators. Ever vigilant in a precarious realm, the meerkats are extremely protective of their young. And what these animals lack in ears, they make up for with their eyes. A guard is always ready to raise the alarm. They spot the neighborhood menace, a black-backed jackal on the prowl. From a distance, he may look like another fox, but he's a definite threat to their young. Ajax senses the coming danger, rising to meet the threat. The jackal is bigger, but when it comes to defending his pups, the little fox is ready to fight. Unlike his adversary. The end of the dry season brings many animals to the No Sob riverbed in search of water and a place to graze. The bat-eared fox's home range can extend up to two square miles of this scrubland. 
an area they constantly forage for food. In daylight, Celine often hunts by scent or sight. Termites are a dietary staple, and it's no problem finding them as they scamper in the dirt. As night falls, her hunt does not stop. Instead, it begins in earnest. The dark hours are a dangerous time to be alone in the Kalahari. But Celine is now in her element, and all night she will rely on her ears. She uses those unmistakable ears like radar, and they guide her to meals burrowed underground. By comparison, a scorpion is loud and dangerous. But bat-eared foxes will eat them, stinging tail and all. The jackal also stalks at night, and Celine's determined to send him on his way. Arching her back and bristling her hair, she confronts the intruder and defends her ground. But the jackal isn't up for a fight tonight. A cautious victor, Celine sees him off. Then settles down to the more productive business of listening. This time, her search is interrupted by an unfamiliar sound. It's another bat-eared fox, crippled and on the run. This little one was most likely injured by a predator. Now it will be lucky to last the night. Celine recognizes her own species but she can't afford to stay. His injury is a magnet for danger. And in the night, danger comes in the form of lions. The crippled little fox never had a chance. The Kalahari is home to many predators, and bat-eared foxes are always at risk. Next morning, Ajax is still keeping watch over the pups, waiting for his turn to feed. Adventure is already up and about, investigating. Flash, on the other hand, never misses a chance to get in a little extra grooming and a snuggle with her father. Little Joe and Kinky stick close to the burrow. There's relative safety by the den. 
especially when a meerkat sentry sounds the local alarm. It seems some new neighbors moved in during the night, and the meerkats aren't at all happy about it. They're Cape Foxes, and they're not welcome. They may be relatives of the Bat Ears, but these are full-blooded omnivores. They'll eat anything, even a meerkat baby. One Cape Fox youngster has been left at the den while its parents are off on a hunt. He's just a pup, no real threat, but the meerkats want to bully him out. They inch their way closer, testing the wind, just in case his parents return. Then they set out to give him a good scare. The young Cape Fox is frightened, but no more than those who torment him. The truth is, even half a dozen meerkats don't amount to much of a threat. And now it may be too late. The mother Cape Fox is on the horizon. Cape Fox parents may spend more time away from home than the bat ears, but they do eventually return. Which could mean trouble for the meerkats. As the mother heads back to her youngster, the meerkat guards are clearly agitated. But there's nothing they can do, except stand by and watch. With the father returning to the burrow as well, there's no question, they're outgunned. The mother tends to her offspring, but it's the meerkats that need consoling. They built this neighborhood, but now it's been taken over. They gather the troops and leave. Safe neighborhoods are hard to find on the open Kalahari. They stop often to check their surroundings. For Ajax's family, this departure could be a problem. Their early warning system has just fled across the desert. In a dry riverbed not far away, the meerkats arrive at a new home, one they excavated earlier. Still, it has to be inspected. Sure enough, there are other occupants. Another family of bat-eared foxes. The meerkats decide to stay. The bat-eared foxes will chase away any jackals that could come near. While protecting their young, they'll be guarding the meerkats as well. For the second fox family, the meerkat alarm system is extremely useful. There's always at least one meerkat on guard. The only other animals around are a harmless group of ground squirrels. The new place seems safe enough, but the meerkats are always curious, always cautious. With new neighbors, everyone's a little on edge.
Soon the guard announces a real threat. The menacing jackals back on the scene. The male fox races out, urging the jackal to move on. At the other den, Ajax, Selene, and the pups don't realize the jackal is circling back toward them. With no meerkat sentry, the foxes are more vulnerable than ever. Slipping through the shrubs, the jackal gets very close before he's spotted. The jackal has been outfoxed yet again, but he'll never stop trying. For all the animals here, this is a lean and hungry time. A time of long hunts and little food. At midday, Ajax returns to the den to rest. Daytime foraging can be rough under the summer sun, when temperatures of over 100 degrees take their toll. It's December, the end of the hot, dry season, and the Kalahari bakes like an open-air furnace. Some of the animals here are well adapted to the heat, but almost all seek out whatever shade they can find to conserve their energy. Only the hungriest are out on the prowl, like this gaunt mother cheetah. Ajax must shepherd the pups back into the burrow to wait out the threat as the cheetah stalks nearby. Little Adventure doesn't know enough to hide. The cheetah calls to her three offspring. Luckily for Little Adventure, the cheetahs have another meal in mind. With the danger past, Celine calls the other pups from the den. Only Adventure shows little interest in nursing. He's well on his way to being weaned. Now almost two months old, it won't be long before the other pups follow suit. But they still haven't lost their interest in having fun. There's always time for a good romp. These rough and tumble games may be practice for more dangerous encounters to come. In the cool of the early evening, games give way to more serious matters. The cheetahs have focused on a herd of springbok. The hunters eye their prey, waiting for the right moment to strike.
The springbok are unaware of the predators. But these young cats are still learning the rules of the hunt. They launch their attack. But it's too late. The inexperienced cheetah has let the prey escape. Over the next few hours, the cheetahs will test their skills again. By night, they make the kill that eluded them by day. Of course, the jackal is never far off. If he's hoping to find a meal here, he'll have to settle for scraps. All he can do is wait. But other hungry eyes watch from the darkness. And the jackal decides to move in. The cheetahs won't stand for it. The scavenger continues to lurk in the shadows. Finally, the jackal can stand it no longer and grabs at the only thing it can, the discarded entrails. And then, the brown hyena launches its assault. Powerfully built, with bone-crushing jaws, the hyena is a dangerous rival. The cheetahs won't risk injury just to keep a few bones. They've had their fill. But as the carcass disappears into the night, the loss is harder on the jackal. With their stomachs full, the cheetahs settle in to groom and lounge. With all this action so close to home, Ajax and Celine set off in search of another den. But moving at night can be risky. The jackal is already on their trail. And this time, he's brought his mate. Out in the open, the foxes have nowhere to shelter their pups if trouble begins. Suddenly, Celine senses danger. Ajax repels the first assault. But this time, the jackals aren't running away. Celine looks for her pups. One is missing. 
little Joe has wandered off. Ajax goes on the offensive. But as he fights off the first jackal, in the confusion, the other goes for the prize. In a matter of seconds, little Joe is taken. There's nothing Ajax can do. The Kalahari has claimed another victim. As a new day breaks, it's an unsettling time for our Fox family. They've moved to a new home, but paid a terrible price. And there are more hard times to come. In this part of the Kalahari, the rains are late this year. The land has turned to dust. The sun wrings every drop of moisture out of the land. The wildebeest are skittish in the heat, and with good reason. As herds gather at the riverbed, predators follow. In these difficult times, the lionesses are reluctant to share even with their own cubs. The winds that blow now bring only trouble. Sandstorms are on the way. Great clouds of dust swirl across the land. The animals wander in a choking haze. But the parching winds will soon bring relief as well. Finally, the drought breaks. The lions luxuriate in the shower. And the foxes get a new lease on life. The deluge may continue off and on for months. In February, the rains temporarily subside, and a new world is revealed. The Kalahari has been transformed. The Nosab is once again a river, and it will draw life from miles around. 
Storks arrive in search of the hordes of insects that appear after the rains. Many animals are getting their first drink of water in months. Springbok find a great green pasture spread out before them. For the foxes, too, things are changing. These are fat times for everyone. Even nervous meerkats will take advantage of this season of abundance. The fox pups are growing up. The family no longer needs to stay close to the den. For Kinky, Adventure, and Flash, there's a new world to explore. The small animals that endured the dry season now find themselves surrounded by the grazing herds that follow the summer rains. Gemsbok, Springbok, Hartebeest all return to the riverbed in this time of plenty. For grazers like this wildebeest, there's a banquet at their feet. The bat ears, like all the animals in this part of the Kalahari, take advantage of the bounty. Ajax has had a successful day of foraging. He's got a gecko, a tiny lizard, and he's bringing home the treat. For the pups, this wiggly snack will present a new challenge. Flash is still angling for easier meals, but her brothers go for the gecko. Celine is only reluctantly willing to nurse. The pups are getting too big. With a full set of teeth, they're now well equipped to chew up a lizard. A neighboring family of cape foxes makes its presence known. The bat ears aren't glad to see them. For the first time, Kinky and Adventure show a young cape fox who's in charge. Celine gives her feisty youngsters a grooming reward. while Ajax, always pugnacious, adds a bit of bravado to the display. Of course, intimidating a youngster is easy. It may be a different story when the Cape Fox mother returns. But the belligerent Ajax won't stand for any trouble. The Cape Fox mother will keep her distance for a while, 
leaving her youngster to fend for himself. As long as Ajax is around, the pup will have to wait for his next meal. As it turns out, there are big events afoot for the bat-eared foxes. As the sun begins to set, the pups are heading out to forage for themselves. The whole family sets off together. For Celine and Ajax, this marks a turning point. It's been hard work caring for the pups, but they're on their way to taking care of themselves. No longer tied to the den, the pups can explore the landscape. The pups, and the family itself, are quickly coming of age. In the Kalahari, night is the time of the hunter. And now, the bat-eared fox family can make the most of it. They'll hunt like this for hours, and there'll be some surprises along the way. For the pups, this gecko will offer another chance to test their skills. Flash already knows insects, but lizards still present a challenge. Of course, Ajax knows exactly what to do. Flash begs for a bite, but she must learn to catch her own. It's time for Ajax to give her a lesson. He stuns the gecko, then waits as his daughter draws near. She's happy to try a morsel, now that it's stopped running around. Not far away, the Cape Fox Mother is also out foraging. For these accomplished omnivores, catching a gecko is second nature. The young Cape Foxes know just how to handle fresh meat. Even as pups, they have the killer instinct. A nightjar chose the wrong place to rest. These ferocious youngsters will go after anything from a bird to a baby meerkat. But on the other side of the river, the young bat-eared foxes are still learning. For Kinky, a scorpion is definitely a mouthful. Which end should he grab? Instinctively, he seems to know it's not entirely harmless. But subdued, a scorpion is a crunchy treat. Meanwhile, Adventure's inquisitive streak leads him off into the night. But he's not alone.
The lion is closer than the foxes realize. And in an instant, it's too late. Celine searches for her youngster, but he's gone. For a moment, Ajax seems to consider a run at the lion. But for all his posturing, there's nothing he can do. Another young member of his family has been taken. The family regroups at their old den, seeking safety on familiar ground. For the bat-eared fox family, times are tough. They've lost half the litter. Only two pups remain. The rains have passed, and winter comes to the Kalahari. It's June, and Kinky and Flash are nearly grown. The land is dry again, and food is dwindling. But there are more than enough termites around. Their mounds are everywhere in this part of the Kalahari. With the cooler temperatures, the bat ears can forage all day. Now that Flash and Kinky are grown, the jackal is no longer a threat, and he actually forages alongside the family. There's plenty here for everyone. By now, the grazing animals have all gone, but an exotic visitor drops by, a cory bustard. One of the heaviest of the flying birds, it's also come to partake in the termite feast. The youngsters have seen a lot of things by now, but nothing quite like this. Flash stays out of the way. By August, the foxes are nine months old, and their lives take another turn. A newly mature Flash is leaving scent markings, letting males know she'll soon be ready to mate. But Ajax, the protective father, covers her markings with his own. Still, Flash's instincts won't be denied. While the family forages, Flash is on her own persistent mission. She's done her advertising, and it's been noticed. A young male fox has caught her scent. Flash welcomes him, and the courtship begins. Over the next few days, the two foxes will bond. Flash isn't ready to mate, but she's interested, and her suitor even more.
none of this sits well with Ajax. Flash and her suitor take their first tentative steps together. He seems a little pushy. She seems inclined to go along. Ajax has seen enough. Heads down, the youngsters beg for forbearance. Flash interceding as her bow cowers behind. But Ajax wants him gone. His parental work done, Ajax settles down with the family. Flash rejoins them. Her first flirtation has been a failure. Or has it? Her would-be mate hasn't gone far. He's just a quarter of a mile away. Foraging to keep up his strength, he intends to stick around for a while. Ajax seems to be feeling complacent. He's managed to keep his family intact, at least for now. But Kinky, too, has reached sexual maturity, and now he's in the market for a mate. He leaves the family in search of his future. Soon, Flash's persistent suitor tries another approach. This time, he advances with deference. A young suitor seeking approval. This approach goes over much better with Ajax who allows the young suitor to leave with Flash. The young couple set off to begin their new life. Meanwhile, Kinky has discovered the scent of an available female and, in passing, leaves his own. As night falls, the female's family discovers his markings. Kinky's potential mate appears receptive adding her own scent to his. She is, in fact, the fox next door, from the Riverbed family. Kinky tries his luck. They seem a little touchy, so he takes a low-key approach. It appears to be working. Ears back, 
Crouching low, he's a study in submission. The new couple leave the family behind, and in time, their courtship will begin in earnest. Meanwhile, Flash and her mate have moved to her family's first burrow, but she's still not ready to mate. When the time finally comes, he's still not sure which end is up. At last, he gets it right. To help ensure the success of their union, the mating will go on for days. In just over two months, the couple will know if they've accomplished their goal. With luck, there will soon be new additions to the neighborhood. By November, Flash has pups of her own, a healthy litter of three. Despite the hardships of life in this unforgiving land, Ajax and Selene's bloodline now has a chance of living on. A feisty new generation of pups has arrived. Desert foxes with an ear to the winds that blow across the great Kalahari.